Hi guys, welcome to Tech Greens. So in the continuation to our series on Spark interview questions, we'll discuss uh, today about Spark internals. This is the part two. In the part one, we discuss the high level architecture and the different runtime components. So let's take a further deep dive with this part two. So this is the high level Spark architecture that we discussed in the part one that how a driver program initiates the execution of tasks on the worker node and this is all managed through cluster manager and eventually post the completion of tasks the results are written back to the driver program or they will go to some external storage depends on how the user program is written now let's take a further deep dive uh, what actually happens when you do uh, submit a particular spark job Let's, let's see uh, this video, uh, this detailed diagram. So the first block that you see is the driver program. So once you do a Spark submit, a driver program is launched. This driver program requests for resources to the cluster manager. And at the same time, the main program of the user function of the user uh, processing program is uh, initiated or called by the driver program based on that the execution logic is processed and parallelly spark context is also created using the spark context the different transformations and actions are processed so till the time uh, the action is not encountered all the transformations will go into the uh, spark uh, context in the form of DAG uh, that will create the RDD lineage once the job is called once the X I'm sorry once the action is called job is created job is the collection of different task stages right so job is a collection of different tasks tasks in itself are uh, categorized into different stages based on the shuffle boundaries so this is uh, once the tasks are created these tasks are launched uh, through the cluster manager on the worker nodes and uh, this is done with the help of class called task scheduler the conversion of uh, you know, RDDs or uh, DAG RDD lineage or uh, two into the TAS is done with the help of DAG scheduler. Here, uh, DAG is created based on the different transformations in the program, and once action is called, these are split into different stages of TAS and submitted to the TAS scheduler as TAS become ready. Then uh, these tasks are launched on the different uh, executors in the worker node through the help of cluster manager the entire resource allocation and the tracking of the jobs and tasks is performed by the cluster manager and also one more point as soon as you do the spark submit uh, your uh, user program jar and other configurations whatever you have mentioned are also copied on to all the available nodes in the cluster so that 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 program becomes a local read on all the worker nodes so that the parallel executors running on different worker nodes do not have to do any kind of network routing and thus save the network overheads uh, so this is how the entire execution of spark submit jobs under the hood let's see let's see in uh, detail once again what is the execution flow so as soon as you do the spark submit then uh, spark job application job is initiated and the first thing performed is the program the travel program is launched which creates in spark context and also calls the main program uh, in the main program whatever transformations are mentioned 
uh, with uh, are saved in the Spark context as DAG. That uh, DAG is maintained by a class called DAG Scheduler. Once an action is encountered, once an action is called, then that RDD lineage, that DAG is converted into a job. Job is nothing but a collection of different tasks. Tasks in itself are uh, categorized into different stages. Stage defines the shuffle boundary. All the tasks which uh, are coming within one shuffle boundary are classified together. And that is how they define that this is the stage for the tasks. So in one stage, there will be number of different tasks which would be acting on same partitions of the data. So once uh, tasks are ready, these are submitted to the task scheduler and then task scheduler launches these tasks on the corresponding executors on different worker nodes with the help of cluster manager. So in this entire execution flow, all the resource allocation and the submitted jobs and task tracking is performed by cluster manager. So guys, this is how the, uh, the execution flow happens in the Spark world once you do a Spark submit. Once again, uh, let's take a look on, on this uh, picture, on this diagram. As you can see, the leftmost, the orange box, it's a driver program which initiated a Spark context, calls the main program of uh, the user jar and <coughs> start populating the DAG in the Spark context based on the different transformations defined in the uh, user program. Once it encounters any action, then the job is created. Job is collection of different tasks. These tasks, once they are ready, are uh, allocated to the task scheduler. And task scheduler is responsible for launching these tasks with the help of cluster manager onto the different executors in the worker nodes. Once uh, the execution of tasks, all the tasks finished, the return the result back to the driver program or the results are saved to some external storage based on how the user program is written. One important point guys, once you do any Spark submit and you pass in your uh, program jar and other configurations like uh, <coughs> number of executors, cores, etc. These all are passed or you can say broadcasted to all the nodes in the cluster. So to facilitate the execution of parallel tasks. So that's it guys about the internal details, detailed execution flow of this Spark job. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.